Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Lara Cuenta Ledger Spotlight. I am your host, Jeremy Lara Cuenta, and today we have a very special interview. Uh, we're sitting with the two co-authors of the new book, Anything is Possible, the Eddie Edwards story. We're here with Eddie Edwards and Mark Bolton. Thank you guys for coming on. Uh, really appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate having us. Yeah, thanks All for right. having us. So we're going to get right into it. Um, Eddie, obviously, the book is about your life. Um, and in the book, you speak of an early love for pro wrestling. Um, but do you remember the exact moment and uh, time and place or anything like that where you decided this is what you wanted to do? You know, I was uh, I was a fan, you know, as a little kid growing up, I was a fan. And then, you know, I kind of fell out of it as I was getting older and stuff and, you know, was playing sports and all that. Uh, and then my little brother, who we talked about in the, in the story, actually, he uh, he got me back into it. And it was it wasn't one specific thing, you know, like, so, you know, some people do have that one person or that one moment or that one, just that one thing that that made it click for them. But for me, it was like as soon as I got reintroduced to it, something just clicked. And it was just like, I need to, I need to be a part of this. Like it was, it was the entrance way. It was the action in the ring. It's a, you know, everything, just the, the show that it is, it was the spectacle. It was just the whole wrestling as a whole was something that just, it just took a hold of me and clearly hasn't let go since. Oh, that's awesome. Um, so, you know, you brought the book up. Um, you do say about a few of the guys that you grew up watching, um, you know, and idolizing, um, who were some of those guys, and, and why did they stick out to you? You know, when, it, when I was a young kid, when I was uh, at first a fan, you know, it was like the Hulk Hogan's and the Ultimate Warriors and the Randy Savage, you know, all those, all the big stars um, at that time. And then when I got back into it and I realized it was something I wanted to do, um, it was, you know, a lot of guys like an Eddie Guerrero, guys that, uh, Chris Jericho, guys that were, you know, I'm not a big, I'm not a big guy, so it was kind of, you know, along those lines, like, the Bret Hart's, the Shawn Michaels, guys who were, you know, smaller, but they went out there and they, you know, they tore it up. They left it on the ring. They had, you know, the best matches on the shows. And so, you know, following those guys and trying to, you know, follow in their footsteps and, and studying, you know, everything that they've done, um, finding finding guys like that to look up to um, and aspire to be helps helps drive me. And, you know, Absolutely. It helps, helps drive everybody. Everybody has that goal and what they want to try to accomplish and seeing it be done before you can see that okay this is this can happen you know anything is possible this can happen you know so speaking of anything is possible mark the illustrations are absolutely amazing amazing um so it's I, it's safe to say that you've had this ability all your life yeah yeah um i can remember being in kindergarten and my uh we were drawing pictures and my teacher uh, took my my one drawing and took it around to all the classrooms to show it. It was like all the characters of Sesame Street. <laughs> but like ever ever since I was little, I loved drawing. I always just something I, I always had a passion for. Now, how did you go about harnessing that talent? Because I know some people have a raw ability, but you know, being able to do what you did, um, you know, it's it's really impressive. How did you go about harnessing that? It, it was tough. Um, I tried. I I always wanted to be an artist. Um, but uh, my parents wouldn't let me go to art school. They wanted me to get a, 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 a college education. They said I already knew how to draw. There was no sense to <laughs> going to art school. So I did the, um, the business school. I have a degree in marketing. Um, and it wasn't until after college I started uh, writing and then doing comic books. And then I finally got to start using my, my art abilities. So Eddie's influenced by, you know, Eddie Guerrero and Y2J and guys like that. Were there any artists growing up that you were influenced by? Yeah, definitely. Uh, my my uh, comic book hero was a guy by the name of Rob Liefeld. He's the creator of Deadpool, uh, created uh, Cable, um, tons of characters. Uh, when I was a teenager, I saw his, uh, his uh, first issue of New Mutants, and it blew me away. And I, I started following him ever, ever since. Was fortunate enough I got to work with him uh, a few years ago at DC on Hawkman. So yeah, it, it just it just proves the, the 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 theme of the book. Anything is possible if you put the work in. Absolutely. Um, now Eddie, you've been in the business for a while now, and you've gotten to work with some really amazing um, you know competitors and athletes. Um, who were some of your favorite opponents, um, and what made those matches so special to you? 
you know, um, when me and Davey first came to Impact Wrestling and, uh, you know, when we were kind of being elevated and moving up the ranks, you know, as a tag team, we got to, you know, face off against, the, you know, the Hardys, the Hardy Boys, and face off against Team 3D, the Dudleys. And, you know, these are guys that I I was watching as a fan, you know, and I was, I was, a, fan, I was a fan of these guys. And, you know, again, it was these guys that I wanted to be able to do what they were doing. And to be able to get into the ring with them, you know, I got to do it in New York. We got to do it in New York City, like a, you know, a three-way match, three-way ladder match and a three-way tables match in an awesome atmosphere against two of the greatest tag teams you who have ever been, you know, so that is a moment that will, will always stick with me. I had a, we actually took a picture before, you know, before the match, all three teams together. And that's one that I have framed in my, in my room that I hold close to my heart because it's just all that hard work, you know, had, had led to that. These are guys that I was a fan of and I grew up watching and I was able to, I was able to go in there and wrestle them and, we stood our own, you know, we stood our own, and um, it was just a special moment. And even now, like, with the stuff, I'm doing stuff with, you know, Tommy Dreamer and everything. Again, a guy that I was a fan of, and now I get to go out there and wrestle with them or work with them in the back and do vignettes and stuff. So uh, sometimes it's still it's still pretty surreal, you know, when that, that type of stuff happens. Or, you know, even, like, a, a, just the funny things where, I'll have, you know, I have, whatever, Tommy Dreamer's phone number in my phone or, like, you know, the Hardys or something. And, like, if you could go back and tell my 15-year-old self that I'm going to, you know, have uh, have these guys' numbers in my phone, let alone, like, you know, be be friends and coworkers with these guys. I, I still go back. I still will tell my brother, like, hey, I'm uh, I'm wrestling Tommy Dreamer in a hardcore match tonight. You know, just, <laughs> just stuff like that. And uh, it, it's important to not – for it to not lose that special feeling when you do get that chance. Absolutely. Um, speaking of Tommy Dreamer, you guys teamed up uh, at Bound for Glory over the weekend, and we saw Moose and, and Killer Cross attack you. What, what kind of plan do you have for uh, retaliation on these guys? Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's going to involve it's going to involve this kendo stick, the kendo stick passed on by one Tommy Tommy Dreamer. It'll involve that, and hopefully Moose's head. That's that's the, that that's, the fun, good. that's the funnest way to let aggression out. <laughs> Sounds amazing. Um, so, Mark, you've actually worked with uh, quite a number of um, different companies as far as uh, graphic novels and things like that. Uh, can you tell us just a few of the, the ones that you've worked with and, and how you got connected to those guys? Sure. Um, I started out uh, doing my own uh, independent series, uh, Coney Waves. Uh, it's about a female detective in Hawaii that's uh, solved supernatural mysteries. Uh, that book sort of made a name for myself, and I, that's how uh, I got in touch with uh, my uh, Rob Liefeld, who I mentioned earlier. He had took notice in my work. He asked me to work with him on some projects. And then when he was tapped to do Hawkman at DC Comics, he brought me along for that. And uh, from there, I've just uh, work, continued to work on my own stuff. Uh, I was hired by Seven Horns Publishing to do a, a different children's book, and that's when I, at the time, I had pitched the book to Eddie, so I pitched, I enjoyed working with Seven Horns so much, I pitched the idea to them, and they were all about it. That's awesome. Uh, so, this kind of goes to both of you guys. Um, so, if anybody was looking to get into the, you know, either the wrestling business um, or, like, uh, you know, the art field, um, you know, graphic novel field, um, what kind of advice would you guys have for those guys? You know, for wrestling wise, it's you know, I, I guess it's probably pretty similar. Maybe it may be similar in the artist world and you know, outside world. Or if you want, you know, to get involved, you have to find a way to get involved. You know, you can, it's nothing's going to happen when you're you're sitting on the sidelines or sitting at home. You know, when I wanted to wrestle, I had to you know go out and find a wrestling school. And uh, you know, wrestling especially is something that you can't you can't be half in, half out. It's something you got to be all in. You have to be, you know, 110%, all, all those cliches, but it's true. You have to, you have to be giving it all because if not, the wrestling business is not, it's not going to give anything back to you. But if you give it all to the, to the business, not all the time it gives it back, but you have a better chance of, of surviving and getting it back and, and being, being able to live your dream. And that's, you know, that's what I get to do, you know, every time, like today we have TV tapings. I'm here and, you know, this is my job and I'm, I'm very happy that I get to do this for a living. And I know, you know, I, I'm one of the lucky ones, and I'll never, that's something I'll never forget. So if you want to get in the business, find a place to train, 
and just completely throw yourself into it. There's no other way. Yeah, a lot of the same advice applies to the, the art world. Draw every day. Um, if you can't find a publisher willing to give you an opportunity, you create your own opportunities. I made my own book to start off with. Um, from there, that that got me noticed. Uh, once you make that first book, it's a lot easier to make the second one, the third one, and you just keep going. You never stop. That's awesome. Um, so just kind of pivoting back um, to anything is possible. Um Eddie, when did you decide you wanted to kind of bring this story to life? You know, it, it was all from Mark, man. He uh, he hit me up on Twitter, and that was when the first first time he posed a question to me. And I, you know, yeah, of course, like it was something that uh, I may, you know, I, I may not have thought about it on the regular, but I've always wanted to kind of step outside of, of wrestling, try to do things outside of just inside the wrestling ring. You know what I mean? I want to try to try to get a little bit bigger, you know, just kind of not be limited to just inside the wrestling ring. And Mark, you know, he gave me this great opportunity. And, you know, we met at uh, an independent show in New Jersey and he we got the ball rolling. You know, he, he came up with the idea and then, he, you know, I can't, I can't give enough credit to Mark for how he absolutely just ran with the ball and, you know, got the publishing and all that. It's, uh, he made it very easy for us to get first. For me to get, I don't know if it's easy for him, but for me to get, for me to get this done, you know. So uh, it's it's been it's been pretty surreal. Even when you know the idea came about, uh, I've said that you know in the world of professional wrestling, there's a lot of, there's a lot of promises that are made all the time, but until you actually see it and it's in front of you, I tend not to believe it. So even when the first step question was posed, like, yeah, let's do it, let's see, you know, see what happens. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't really tell. I didn't tell my wife. I didn't tell my family. Like, oh, well, we'll see what happens. And then, all of a sudden, there's there's a book, and it's done. And Mark's sending the art, the artwork, and uh, it's 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 the whole thing. The whole situation has blown me away. And, and our, the publishing company has been great for us too. So, um, I got lucky. With, I got lucky having Mark uh, working with me. That's for sure. That's awesome to hear. So. Before I let you guys go, um, where can everybody purchase uh, anything as possible? Uh, they can go to the website at theedwardsbooks.com. Uh, there's links. You can buy it on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, both in physical and digital versions. Okay. Um, and, and then and for – go ahead, Ed. Yeah, I just want to – I actually got – we're in New York, and uh, the publishing company actually sent me a copy. This is, this is the hardcover right here. Oh, nice! That's awesome. <laughs> it's, uh, so I'm pretty pretty pumped to to see this, and you know, just showing the the boys here and everybody here. They're they're pretty everybody's pretty excited about it actually here. So it's pretty cool. Uh, it's fi it's finally actually physically in my hands. So now we know <laughs> it is indeed it is indeed real. And That's if, awesome. you know, if anybody if anybody you know purchases one and come come to an independent show, come to an impact show, I. More than happy to sign it and take pictures. You know, we we appreciate the support. You know that you guys give us out there. Absolutely. Um, so, where can everybody see uh, more of your work uh, for both of you guys? Uh, for me, uh, you can follow me on uh, Instagram and Twitter at Coney Waves. Uh, my first comic book, like I said, it's K O N I Waves W A V E S. And for myself, it's I'm just on Twitter, sticking to Twitter still. Uh, <laughs> it's at the Eddie Edwards. Um, yeah, go on there, follow along, and I'll be doing. I'm gonna be doing some signings coming up and stuff. So, um, if I'm doing a, a wrestling show in the area, I'm gonna try to get some signings set up. So, just follow along and follow this uh, this journey that we're on together. Uh, it's it's been interesting so far, and I I can't wait to keep it going. All right. Well, thank you guys. Appreciate it so much for joining us on this episode for the Lara Quinta Ledger. Uh, thanks again, guys. Thank you. Thanks for having us.